Okay, so last video I talked about all these components. Actually, I talked about this one component and, and how if you divided it up into four pieces, um, it, would, it would actually be all these separate components inside. Um, now I'm gonna talk about each one of these components, what they do, and actually how you can improve your network by using these components instead of just using a combined wireless gateway. So, so we have a modem. And what a modem does is it converts the ISP signal, your internet service provider signal or whatever medium, let's say media that, that the uh, internet comes in on, could be a cable or a phone line, and it converts it to Ethernet. Okay? That's what your modem does. And whatever signals come through the Ethernet get sent back out towards this. And then whatever signals get come through the phone line or cable get converted to Ethernet. It just goes back and forth. It's one big just double lane highway, if you will. Um, so it, it converts the signals. Why does it convert the signals? Well, and why, why can't we just receive inter Ethernet signals from the uh, ISP? Well, it's because they, the, the Ethernet only has a 300-foot range. And um, it's not really suited to travel long distances, like go through your street and all that stuff. So um, before internet came along, most people had cable TV and most people had, you know, phone lines. So the internet companies were pretty smart and they just went ahead and used the, um, the cable TV and phone lines, the infrastructure that was already there and, and, and created these modems to send that internet signal through these cables that were already in your neighborhood, all right? Um, they've upgraded since then. The, the cables have gotten better, and some people even have fiber lines, all right? And fiber lines, technically, you're not using a modem anymore. You're using a media converter, which is kind of like a modem, except it doesn't convert electrical signals to electrical signals. It converts electrical signals to light signals. All right, that's a media converter. So basically the same thing. You can, if you use the word modem to describe your, your fiber media converter, you wouldn't entirely be wrong. Um, technically it's modulating light signals, so I don't know. Yeah, but that's all your modem does. And it's only one of the four components in your wireless gateway. And you can buy a modem separately. You can buy your own modem and Aris makes one. And it's a DOCSIS right now, DOCSIS 3.1 modem. And your cable will come in and your Ethernet will come out. And the important thing to understand about a modem is all it's doing is converting one line to another. It's a converter box, okay? So you can't have a, a modem connecting to multiple components. In most people's network, okay? We're talking about home networks here. If you're getting multiple static IP addresses from your internet service provider and your modem has multiple switch ports on it, then and if you're smart enough to configure that kind of thing, then yes, you actually can have multiple devices set up on your modem or, or devices plugged into your modem. But for most people's purposes, a modem is going to have a line from the street coming in and a line going out that's an Ethernet. And that's actually, if you don't know how to do this, and you haven't talked to your ISP, your internet service provider about this, then you have to set it up like this. Because the only way to do this is if you purchase multiple connect internet connections from your ISP. If you haven't done that yet and you don't know what I'm talking about, this is how you need to set it up. Otherwise, you're really going to mess up your network. And I will tell you why. Because we're still talking about the modem here. You and your modem gets the cable or the phone line in and it converts it through whatever technology it has inside and it comes out as Ethernet, your ISP is going to send you a number and that number is an IP address and it could be like um, 171.189.17.2 okay I don't know if that's a correct 
ISP number that they would dish out, but this is what it would look like. Um, somewhere in the world, actually somewhere in the world, somebody probably has this IP address. So you get that IP address from your internet service provider, from the ISP, and whatever device, the first device that you connect this ethernet up to, it could be a computer, it could be a router, I'm gonna say or a router will receive this IP, this IP address from your internet service provider, which is actually called a WAN IP or wide area network IP. So you have a modem. It's connected to cable and phone. Converts all the signals, converts it to ethernet, and you plug that ethernet cable into your computer, it's gonna receive an, ISP, an IP address from your ISP. It's gonna receive a dynamic, ISP, uh, 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 a dynamic IP address. And what that means is it's gonna change over time. Doesn't mean you're gonna lose your internet connection. All it means is that, you can think of this like a phone number. All it means is that your phone number or your IP address is going to change from time to time, but that doesn't matter because you'll always have an internet connection and you'll always be able to connect to the internet. But the important thing to understand is you only get one of these, all right? You only get one from your internet service provider and it's dynamically assigned. All right, meaning it, they give it to you. They give it randomly to you with a pool of a bunch of these numbers and it gets sent to this device. All right, so they could, have, um, they could have tens of thousands of these, hundreds of thousands of these numbers, all unique. All, and the important thing to understand about this number is it's unique to the entire planet. Okay, so you have all the continents, that's my world. Um, there's, you know, I don't know, it's upside down, that's Antarctica. Um, but this is unique. It's unique to the entire planet. All right, I know there's other IP addresses we're gonna discuss later that aren't unique to the entire planet, but this one is, all right? And it's the one you get from the ISP. And the reason they only give you one is because they're actually really, uh, they're really uh, scarce. They're really rare, and, or not rare, but they're scarce. They're running out of them, okay? Because this is an IPv4 address. Now there is a technology called IPv6 that's solving that problem, but for now, just remember that there's only about four billion of these in the entire world. They're running out, all right? And they only give you one to share between all your devices. Because what if they give you, gave you one of these world unique numbers that's unique to the entire world to each one of your devices in your home? Well, they'd, be, they'd run out quicker than they can even think. So they give you one, it's dynamically assigned, and you have to share it with all your devices. Now, your modem does not share this, okay? Which is why it's important to understand you can only connect one component to your modem. This is your modem. You can only connect one component to this. Unless you're into advanced networking and you've talked to your ISP and you've ordered multiple static IP addresses, you can only connect one to this, okay? Very important. If I connected a, a computer plus a router, the router would take the, the IP address and then this would have none. This wouldn't get any internet at all. The router would get it. So it's very important. You can't have a router connecting to a, a modem and your computer connecting to a modem. It doesn't work, all right? So, and then the next day, maybe your computer gets greedy and it steals this IP address and it goes, that's mine. Well, then this one doesn't have an IP address to use. There's only one and only one device gets it. It's very important to understand. So that's a modem. And next we're gonna talk about our second component in this, which is our router.